Okay, welcome to week two for the Iron Age Nidderdale project. I'm Gillian Hovel. So last week, what we had was we'd just gone down through this bridge that's here and we'd hit a reddish floor, which just an hour before the end of the day, don't know what it is. So today we've been working our way down both from this end and from the other end to see what's going on. <laughs> As usual, it's never what you expect it to be. So uh, we'll take a closer look. Can we uncover it? So, so, so we can see what's going on and can I stand in your trench? There we go. It may not look desperately exciting, uh, but what we've got is we've got this bridge has been made up of stones which are all piled up together. Very definitely a structure, very definitely built on top of a surface. The surface was red, very red. Burnt or iron, which we don't know at the moment. Beneath that was a load of clay, and then beneath that again, it was red again. What we've got is the clay stops at this level, and then it becomes another texture. It's a gritty, orangey sandstone sand mix, which continues over there. Uh, and we're trying to see if they meet up, but both trenches are very different. Uh, this is the bridge beside us, and there were loose stones sitting on the clay floor, but suddenly here it changes into these substantial stones that Josh is doing here. Now this is the revetment edge where the stream, at the moment we've dammed it up so we can work in the wheel pit, but the stream flows past, and here is the edge. Very definite edge there, probably coming to here or here, and then we've got this surface. So we're having to map out exactly what's going on where, finding out what well, this clearly looks like some kind of retaining wall uh, we're just seeing how deep it goes really full of roots no roots here roots there not there another part of the story really shows a completely different structure right so this is this is the wheel pit which you can see is these massive stones here massive structure well built and the bottom unfortunately it's slightly filling up at the moment but the bottom is just there and it would have been stone lined and I found a few stones that indicate they were on the bottom. All of this lot here are rubbish. None of this would have been here when it was a working wheel. So you see, it's all been there a few hundred years now. And it's well and truly fixed in. And this one's huge, you know how that got in there, I do not know. So I'm quite pleased with this end, although we think this was what's called a breast shot wheel, where the water would have hit the middle of the wheel and then gone over the top. Sorry, under the bottom. Have to get that one out. Uh, but it's a superb piece of construction, and then this lot here just been put on the top to make a very simple bridge. This, this is this is 1611. This was shown on maps. Uh, one of the uh, restraints we've got here is that we've got a wall over there, and we've got if I move that some kind of feature here, a squarish feature, which seems to be sitting on top of the more modern floor. It was full of hammer scale, so it's very definitely a feature, but that requires a different approach to what we're doing here. It's a mind-boggling jigsaw, it really is. We've got the bridge, which we started off with. We know that it was well constructed with stones. We know it was sitting on a particular surface. We've discovered that that surface might be on top of a whole heap of infilled rubble. Uh, it goes down quite a long way to a very squidgy, soft clay uh, floor, uh, which is good, definite floor. But at a certain surface, we're coming up with a wonderful, fantastic grey, charcoal-filled surface, which is very hard. It's got a very distinct edge to it, though. The story is very much continuing. It's, uh, we're getting deeper, and perhaps we'll find out more next week as to which layer goes where. <laughs> 